In this video, we'll cover some useful tools for working with NumPy arrays. NumPy has a bunch of functions that compute statistics for an array. Let's start with an array of random numbers. We'll call it data, and we'll set it equal to np.random.rand20. So we get 20 random numbers. We can compute the sum of all the elements with np.sum of data. We can compute the mean, np.mean of data. And we can compute the standard deviation. That's np.std for standard deviation data. There are functions to find the smallest value. np.min of data will give you the smallest one, while np.max of data will give you the largest. We can use the resulting values to modify the original data. We can say that centered data is the original data minus the mean of the data. And then we can say that the final data is the centered data divided by the standard deviation of the data. And then we can see what final data turns out to be. This array is going to be centered around 0 with a standard deviation of 1. With arrays, we can modify whole slices of the array at once. If we start with some empty array, empty array equals np dot zeros, we'll make it size 15. We can take a slice of that partway through, say empty array from 5 to 10, and we can set it to something else. And then see what we got. You can see this specifically replaced these entries with a new A range. These don't even have to be contiguous elements. We can take a slice with a step size of 2, with empty array starting at 1 and going every 2. And as long as we set it equal to an array of the same size, it'll let us fill it in appropriately. So we can go back and assign to this the value of np.random.rand, and our size for this is going to be an integer for the length of the empty array divided by 2. And then we can see what that looks like. As long as you can find a way to slice out the exact piece you want to edit, you should be able to set it however you want. Slicing lets us select elements based on their indices, where they're located in the array. Masking lets us select elements based on their values instead. This works by making comparisons. Scalar values are simple to compare. We can just do 2 greater than 1, and this will tell us that's true. This value of true is actually another type of variable. It's a boolean value, which either has a value true or false. In this case means that 2 is, in fact, greater than 1. We can do less than or equal to comparisons. So 1 is actually less than or equal to 1. We can do equality comparisons. 5 is equal to 5. This gives us true. And note that this takes two equal signs. One equal sign is for assignment, two equal signs is for comparison. So finally, we can also check inequality. The statement 5 is not equal to 5 is false. If we do a comparison between an array and a scalar, the comparison will be applied to each element individually. Let's take a range of values. We'll call it counting, and we'll set it equal to np.a range of 5. And now we want to see which elements are greater than or equal to 2. So to do that, we'll create a mask. And we'll set that equal to counting greater than or equal to 2. And then let's just see what's inside of it. In the counting A range, these three values are going to be greater than or equal to 2, with the others being less than 2. So this is now the mask that lets through the values we want to keep, the trues, and throws out the ones we want to discard, the falses. Let's try one more example of masking. Let's make some random numbers, we'll call them some rands, and set them equal to np.random.rand, and we'll make 20 of them. And then in one line, we'll pull out the values greater than 0 0.8 and square them. So we'll take some rands, and then put a mask in as an index, where the mask is some rands, greater than 0 0.8. And for the values that are greater than 0 0.8, we'll square them. These tools let you do some powerful data manipulation, and will be very useful moving ahead.